South Korea's own media have described the jamboree as a national disgrace and survival game. It's, it's unheard of. It hasn't happened in over 30 years to this extent. The Gibraltar scouts were part of the UK cohort and were lucky to have got out a day before the whole thing was called off. The trip has been a roller coaster ride, to say the least. Everything was going well. Team building, everyone was good, morale was high. And then we arrived in Korea. And then we got told that the camp was not ready. The camp had flooded, it was unsanitary, and it wasn't ready for us. So we were delayed by a day. Then that day passed, we were told, OK, we're leaving to camp in the morning, be ready. We got there. We went there, everything was good. But then we started looking around, we started exploring. The toilets were very unsanitary. Um, the camp wasn't up to scratch. The vegetarians were barely able to eat. The heat was unbearable. It was horrendous all the way around. Well, when Kevin called, um, it was shocking. He was in a state, he was really crying and obviously we didn't know what was happening. Kevin was just crying maniacally. And um, he told us, but Kevin, calm down, what's wrong? No, we have to leave the jamboree, um, it's not fair. We got found out that the toilets weren't equipped properly, there was a lack of water, um, obviously there was a COVID outbreak also. Obviously we learned all that via the, the media um, and I'm thankful for that because obviously there wasn't that much information provided for us. We were there for three days, obviously with the weather warnings and then we got the final typhoon warning. That came from the UK contingent. We were there for three days. We were actually there an extra day because we were totally better prepared. And then we got pulled out from the UK contingent heads. And then we also made the decision and yep, we're going out back to Seoul. We got notified that the entire camp is getting evacuated because of the typhoon. And there was panic everywhere from at least 40, uh, 47,000 uh, trying to leave one campsite all at once. It was mayhem. There was people from Australia, Netherlands, going to one hotel, which was cramped. We were all in tears. It was, there was so much build-up, so much preparation, so much you know, fundraising, etc., to, to go so far and then get told we're not going to be there for the, the whole amount of time that we were promised. Um, it's disappointing. The actual camp was cut short early, but um, that meant that we got to spend more time in the actual city and we got to um, talk more to the locals and learn more about their history. We went on quite a few tours. The Jamboree isn't the camp, it's the people. And we still managed to carry the spirit throughout our time in Seoul. So um, enjoying with the amazing unit that we had and speaking to new people, meeting new people, that was what the Jamboree spirit was about. And so the activities, again, didn't really matter. It was meeting the people, having fun with new people. We were paired with a, a unit from Lincolnshire and obviously we've been living with them and we've, had, we've been through so much with them through these three weeks. And when you spend 24 hours a day with people for three weeks um, going through things, I think you build like a special connection with them. So I think that, that's really stuck with me. The visit ended with a K-pop concert performance for all the scouts. It's been a memorable experience. Each scout has taken different lessons from their unique journey, but there's no doubt they're happy to be home. <laughs>